I am looking forward to this time, New Boundaries, in Hebrews chapter 11, a chapter of faith. And we're gonna look at, we've looked at several other characters in the past weeks. If you missed some of those weeks, go check them out. We're gonna look at the, the Bible character of Noah. Anybody heard of Noah before? Noah was called by God. You can see a small recount of it in the passage here, Hebrews. Go ahead and open your Bible up to Hebrews chapter 11. You can see a, a small recap of what's happening there in that passage, verse seven. It basically reminds us that what happened in the beginning of Genesis around chapter six already, it basically reminds us that Noah was warned by God to build an ark or a massive boat so that when it rained and floods came on the whole earth, that he would be able to preserve his family and him and all the animals that were there that got onto the ark or the boat. The, the difficulty is that it had never rained before. So they didn't even know what rain was. So he's being told to build a massive boat on dry land in a sinful time around a bunch of sinful people when God looked upon the earth and he said there was no one righteous except for Noah. But because of Noah's obedience in verse seven of chapter 11, because of his obedience and his faith, anybody got faith tonight? All six of you, praise. The rest, will, by the time you leave tonight, you'll have it. Because of his faith and his obedience, hearing God's warning, he built an ark or a boat. I would add into, the, into that, not like I'm adding to scripture, just the context of, the, of what's happening. In the midst of the mockery of all the people around him and the hate that they had to say about what he was doing building a boat on dry land, as if they were gonna push it over to a nearby body of water. As if he needed a boat that big in the first place. You ever been working on something too big before? You ever got some people looking at you, they look at you the wrong way? They just shut you down. Everyone was looking at Noah the wrong way. He didn't shut down. He kept forth in obedience. I wanna to talk to you from a title tonight, The Boundaries of Obedience the boundaries of obedience, setting new boundaries. Here's, here's the thing, all of us have boundaries on our obedience. I know because we just worshiped. All of us have boundaries. Some of them are huge and some of them are small. And here's the thing, some of you just came to know the Lord and so your boundary is not very big. You're just figuring out what this whole faith thing is. Pastor Abdiel and I were, were, were somewhere earlier today and we were like commenting from a point of view of someone who had never really been to church. And we were thinking about the fact that they just received Christ in that moment. Before that moment, they have no faith. In that moment, they got the tiniest little seed of faith ever. How long have you been a Christian? And that's how big your faith is. Think about the person who's here tonight that tonight stepped into faith relationship during this worship time and decided, okay, I'm, I'm, I'm no longer holding back. I'm living for Jesus now. He has my whole life and now they're here and their little piece of faith is being exercised tonight and we're gonna stretch the boundaries of it. And what I wanna know is the mature people, can we stretch your boundaries too? The church people, can we stretch your boundaries too? The people that you look at others and you think, well, my faith is pretty much better than theirs. Can we stretch your faith too? Can we stretch your boundaries tonight? This obedience is an interesting thing because it is not the essence of our saving grace because that was the obedience of Jesus. He made the way that we might have opportunity for faith. But after the point of salvation, obedience becomes the essence of everything regarding faith. So although it wasn't our obedience that opened up the door, it was what Jesus did that opened up the door for us. It's our obedience that carries us, carries us the rest of the way. And so some people give obedience kind of a bad rap because they're like, well, you know, obedience is not about that, it's all about grace. And here's the thing, it is all about grace. And it's all about obedience. 
Because in God's economy, it can be all about a lot of things. In our economy, we have to pick one. His mind is so much bigger than ours, he doesn't have to pick one. When he says faith, he's not just talking about obedience, he's talking about sacrifice. He's talking about worship. He's talking about your life, what your eyes look at, what your ears hear. He's talking about all of that and we try to make it a small thing when it's a huge thing. And as big as the concept is, I want our boundaries to grow in relation to that. I want us to find where those boundaries are in our obedience. I think about Noah all the time. And I think if I were the one that was there in that time, and he would have told me to build something I had never seen before, would I do it? Would you do it? Would you be the crazy one to build the boat? Would you be the one to do what needed to be done regardless of what everyone else was doing? Because it's clear in scripture, everyone else had a different agenda. But he looked at Noah and he said, this guy could have my agenda. This guy could walk in the obedience that I call him to walk in. I know a guy. I know a guy. Gotcha. Y'all ain't even ready for these dad jokes. Guys, I'm going to be a dad in a few months. Dad jokes about to come out of control. Okay? I'm just getting practice. I've been hanging out with Mark trying to learn more dad jokes. Just getting practice. You know, if you know any, write them down for me and then throw them in the trash. Because they're probably not any good. It's neither are mine. <laughs> email them to me. People still use an email, right? Yeah. It's going away, though. It's going away. Went to the mailbox with uh, Pastor Abdiel yesterday, like at my house, you know, he's staying with me and his family's staying with us. And so we walk in by the car, we go by the mailbox and I open up the mailbox and I pull everything out. And both of us, we don't even look at it. We go, it's just all junk. Like, we already know. I'm like, why are they mailing me this stuff? Save your money. Email it so I can put it to spam so I don't have to check it. But everything you mail me, I already got. Like, I already check it all on my phone. I don't need this. Stop wasting your stamps. I don't know, I guess they're having a good time mailing stuff. Little people in an office just licking and putting stuff away and putting little stamps on things. I don't know. So I kind of thumb through it a little bit. You know, I got, my wife said, hey, check all the mails. I'm obedient, so I'm going to do it. Hey, Pastor Abdiel, you know something about what happens when we follow through in obedience. Because obedience to God is not a game. It isn't, it isn't just... Hey, well, here's something out there. Just throw it at you. I, I, I know people down there on earth will be bored, so might as well give them the word obedience and have them figure it out. That's not what's happening. But something begins to take place in our life supernaturally when we begin to walk in obedience. That same spirit of God that was on Noah begins to take place inside of us. And I know it, it, it takes obedience right. to uproot what's happening in another state right. and move your family 1,500 miles across the country. It takes obedience. Yeah. So stand, stand up with me, Pastor FDL. Speak on behalf of your wife and your family. I mean, you know, we don't know everything about obedience. That's right. But you know something about obedience. What do you know? Well, Pastor Mac, it takes obedience to build a cruise ship on top of a mountain to seek to expect rain that has never come. come on. It takes obedience to go from a pit to a palace, from a place of dishonor to a place of honor. It, it takes obedience for, for you to walk in faith and start going into a battle. And, and, and it takes obedience for the whole entire solar system to stop at its tracks, to, to disobey its entire rules so that you can win the battle. You know what? It takes obedience for you to step away from your friends, from people who, who you love, so that you can walk into what God has for you. It takes obedience for you to believe what God is saying about you in this season and to forget what others have said about you in the past season. It takes obedience for us to walk into what God wants to do into our life. It takes obedience and it takes faith. Let me share a little something with you guys. Can you get God a mighty hand of praise? Hallelujah. I was 16 years old. I lived in the city of Allentown, Pennsylvania for all of four years. By the way, my parents are here tonight. Can you give it up for them right here? (laughs) 
It took obedience for them in 1998 to leave their church in Puerto Rico to come plant a church in a city that they didn't know. 16 years old, my dad said, we're going to plant a church. And here's the kicker. I was the only one who spoke English good enough to go to the meetings, to talk to the people, to do the work that needed to be done. And he said, we're going to plant a church together. And he took obedience for us to do that. I remember something that I share today with pride. I did not go to my high school graduation. And I don't want to share that with you because it was a sacrifice, but it was a privilege for me to not go to my high school graduation because we were launching a church and I needed to be there on Sunday because I was doing sound and I was playing the drums. And if I wasn't there, who was going to do the work that God called me to do? It takes obedience. To follow where God is leading you. Sometimes you are unable to see what's behind the door. Most times you will be unable to see. When God called me and my wife after having helped my father and and my mother plant a church in Allentown, a Spanish ministry, when God called my wife and I to, to plant a new church in a different language, in a new way, we said, there is, we looked at each other, we said, there's no questioning the calling of God. We just need to be obedient. Obedience is something that cannot be conditional. You can't just be obedient when, when, when you like the results of what you're receiving through your obedience. Because many times you're unable to see the results. I would argue that, 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 that in hindsight, you will be able to see the result of your obedience. Maybe five years from now. For some of us, we are obedient today and we see God moving today. But for some of us, we just need to walk by faith and not by what we are able to see. How many say amen? amen. So why do we obey God? We obey God because it is our duty to obey God. It is our privilege to obey God. I mean, Jesus Christ, through his death in the cross, he purchased you and me. It's a word, it's a Christian word that we use, redeemed. Redeemed means to buy back. Anybody been to a pawn shop? All right, we got a few, few shady characters here, Pastor Matt. We got, yeah, yeah. When you go to a pawn shop and, and you have an article that you're going to pawn for money, you're basically going to say to them, here's, here's this and hold on to it and give me, give me $500 and, and I'll come back next week and I'll bring $520. That's a pretty good interest rate, I guess. I don't know. It's Maybe bad. it's more than that. And then when I come next week, I'm going to redeem, buy back what belongs to me. That's what Jesus did with you and me. And the only logical response for us is to obey God. It's to obey him because he's already done everything that needed to be done. How many say amen? Amen. He's already done what needed to be done. So we don't don't solely obey God for safety or to receive salvation. In fact, salvation comes first. But obedience needs to follow after that. So many of you, I don't... I don't know all of you yet, but I'm going to know all of you soon. Many of you are here tonight, and maybe you're, you're hesitant to take the step of faith, to take the step of, of, of just giving in your entire life to, to this Jesus that, that Pastor Max so, so, so enthusiastically talks about. Because you may be afraid to commit. But I'm telling you right now, being obedient to God is one of the most powerful things that you can do in your life. And you will not be disappointed. One of the most powerful passages in scriptures that no one talks about and has implications for the entire existence of humanity is found in Genesis chapter 6 verse 22. And I want you to to either look it up, write it down. Remember this, one of the most powerful scriptures, Genesis chapter 6, verse 22. So Noah did everything exactly as God had commanded him. So Noah did everything exactly as what would have happened to humanity if Noah would, would have not done 
what God had asked of him. Right. I know the implications of obedience for Noah. I know what, what was produced through Noah's obedience. I know that through Noah's obedience, God was able to purge the entire planet of a wicked society. I know the implications and I know what my obedience has produced in, in, in my life and in the life of those who I'm able to reach through the gospel of Jesus Christ. What can your obedience produce? What is the implication of your obedience? What is going to happen this week when you are, uh, when you are uh, at the coffee shop and God prompts you to speak to someone about his love and you disobey God? What is the implication of that person not hearing the message that, that they should have heard from your lips? What can your obedience produce this week? Yeah. That's the question that we need to ask ourselves. And that's what we need to receive in our lives. How many say amen? amen. amen. Now, the, the first thing that starts and where it starts and what matters most to God, more than anything else, he wants your heart. Because when your heart has been surrendered to God, you are obedient to God. Even when you don't understand. Even when you can't see it. Even when everything is not lined up the way you want it to be lined up. When your heart belongs to God, you are obedient to God. Genesis chapter 6 verse 9. Kind of starts talking about the account of Noah. And, and here are the words that kind of pop out at me in the scripture. It says... Noah was a righteous man. Noah was a righteous man. The Bible says the, the only blameless person living on earth at that time. In, in other words, Noah's heart was aligned with the heart of God. Noah's heart, when your heart is aligned with the heart of God, he will open up opportunities for you to be obedient. And that's how you have to see it. I, we, don't, we don't have to do this. We get to do this. I don't have to speak to a, I get to speak. I don't have to prep the church. I get to prep that. I don't have to. We get to be obedience to God. Amen. How many say amen? So tonight, I, I want you to think about what your obedience can produce when your heart is aligned with God. And when you just decide, God, I'm just going to do what you told me to do, regardless of what I think. Amen. And I think Pastor Mac has a few more points. He's going to, a few more insights. He's going to share on obedience I better, here. I better, I better get out the way. <laughs> <laughs> Praise God. How many want to be obedient Praise to God? Praise. That's right. That's right. Hey, s stay up here for a moment with me. I told you he had something to say about obedience, didn't I? Just a little something. When, when we walk in obedience, it unlocks an unknown capacity That's right. inside of us. That's right. We're standing on the stage. Yeah. This is a good stage. Uh, by the way, I like this stage. Thank you. I, I really would like to be here more often. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, hint, yeah. hint, hint, wink, hint. Wink, yeah. yeah. This is a great stage. It is. You know, I used to lay in bed and dream about a stage like this Come when on. we had no stage. That's right. You guys dream about other stuff. I dream about this stage because I know the message that comes from this stage. That's right. I know the worship that would flow from this stage. You saw some of the worship that would flow from this stage tonight. We were here on Saturday for Saturday prayer at 10 a.m. You Powerful. saw the worship flowing off of the stage on Saturday at 10 a.m. Powerful. You know a little bit now of the capacity that this stage has. Let's pretend this stage was you for a second. All right? Be the stage. See the ball? <laughs> Be the ball. <laughs> you know, one time I was playing ball with my dad. He was pitching and I was hitting. And I was kind of getting scared of the ball. And so he told me, like, hey, I'm going to throw one. I'm not going to hit you. And I was like, all right. <laughs> and then he hit me with it. <laughs> And I could tell it was on purpose. And he said, see, it didn't hurt. You're fine. Yep. Good lesson right there. Thanks, Dad. Not scared of the ball anymore. See the ball, be the ball. <laughs> be one with the stage, okay? The capacity of this stage to you tonight is that 
We would be up here with a little surprise. They didn't be preaching the word tonight. That someone would be up here preaching tonight. That worship would happen from this stage. That lights would be shining on the stage. That was the expectation of your capacity. Yeah. And in your life, you have an expectation of capacity. Yeah. Because you're walking in a set boundary of obedience. But here's what happens. When you set new boundaries in your obedience then new boundaries get set in your capacity of what God can do through that's you. That's right, that's right. So when you decide to step into obedient places you've been holding back from God, then He is able to that's right. pour into your capacity and make it greater than it was. Yeah. So you look and you say, well, I don't think I could do that. And I say, you, you can't. Because you haven't been obedient to take the step towards that. And if you would, you would realize that whether or not you can do that, he can do it through you That's right. if you will walk in obedience. That's right. That's right. So you came tonight with the capacity of the stage, but you didn't know that this stage has greater capacities than you thought. When we built it, we put a little, some hidden doors in the stage. Oh, help me out here. Open this, open this hidden door. You might not have known this door was here. Whoa. Hey, there's some space down here. Praise. And inside this space, the capacity which you thought tonight, the capacity was worship, preaching, the stage is here, that's all it's for. You didn't know that, that inside the stage tonight, Come on. there was a different capacity. Come on now. If I would have said, do you think there's $1,000 in this stage? You would have said, no. And I would have said, well, you're wrong because I know the capacity of the <laughs> stage. That's right. I know all the dollars that are in here. The singles. I got these singles from the bank. Y'all chill out. <laughs> the five spots. That's right. That's in case I get the valet, you know, or whatever. If there's valet I, and I can do it, I like to do it. It makes me feel like, hey, valet. And <laughs> maybe, a, you know, maybe a 10 spot for the valet if I don't have a five spot. Definitely not a hundo for the valet. No way. Like, I'm generous, <laughs> but, you know, who knows? I mean, I'm feeling. But the capacity of the stage. I'm still popping hundreds right here. There's Whoa. the rest of them. I don't got time for that. There it is. The capacity of the stage tonight was more than you thought it was. That's right. And here's what I know. I don't care about the capacity of the stage. I don't care about the capacity of these dollars. I care about your capacity That's and right. the impact that it has in the kingdom of That's God. Right. I, Amen. I Amen. care about... I care about you resetting the boundaries in your obedience. That's right. And watching God pour in a new capacity inside of you. But if you don't change your boundaries of obedience, he can't pour in or exercise through a different capacity. The stage will always be a stage. The trap door will never be used. No one will ever know about the little things that God hid inside of you. No one will ever know about the deep value that God placed hidden inside of you. Because when you came tonight, you didn't know about the value that was hidden inside the stage. You thought, it's wood. Maybe it's soundproof. Maybe there's some cables under there. But you didn't think there was $100 bills in there. You don't even know how long they were in there. There are things that have been inside of you. You don't know are in there. You don't know how long they've been in there. But it's time to stand up and let your obedience stretch so that your capacity could grow bigger and larger than you ever thought it could. I'm not trying to hype you up. I'm trying to preach the word of God. And if he did it for Noah, he can do it for you. If he made a guy build a boat, he can help you make a car. If he made a guy build a boat, what might he ask you to do? What might he have been putting on your heart over these past few months that you thought, that's too crazy, that's not him, that's not me, I can't do that. But you were just one step away from stretching your boundaries of obedience, Jeremy, so that God would begin to pour in a new capacity inside of you so that what you thought of yourself, though it might have been big, what he saw in you was greater than what you saw in yourself. Do you have enough faith to believe that what God sees in you is bigger than what you see in you? Do you have enough faith to believe that the capacity you thought you had in your obedience is bigger than you thought it was? Do you have enough faith to take the next step of obedience? I don't need you to go home tonight and buy gopher wood. I don't even know where you get gopher wood. That's what he built the ark out of, gopher wood. I don't need you to go tonight 
and buy a few acres of land so you can build a boat. That's not your assignment, I don't think. Hope. Hope not. But I do need you to take the next step of obedience. And that unlocks a deeper capacity. I don't need you to know. Don't let the devil walk out with you tonight. Period. And, and have in your mind that you have to figure out your calling before you can take the next step. Because that's not obedience. That's not faith. He just said it. If you knew what was behind every door, where would the faith be? It says at the beginning of the chapter 11 that faith is the assurance of what is unseen. That means it is the resolved idea. That is, means it's the resolved fact. That means it is the fullness of resolution that behind that door is what God has for me. That means that behind the door of what God has for me is fully resolved. And if I already know what's behind the door, there's no faith to open it up. Y'all ready? Next week. Next step. One step. There's no map. He called Abraham. He called Enoch. You're like, who's these people's names? He called Noah. He's calling you. He's calling you to greater obedience for greater capacity. Would you go ahead and stand up as we close out? I need somebody real trustworthy. All right, John, you, you raise your hand first. You're real trustworthy. Would you collect, would you collect this, this money for me? I'll take this one. I hope what you remember tonight is not just the time that Pastor Mac pulled out $1,000 out of the stage, give or take a few dollars, and slung it around to talk about if you were the stage would you be rich I hope that's not what you took tonight if you remember that great I hope what you received tonight was that through obedience we unlock capacity I hope what you received tonight is through salvation we step into obedience I hope what you receive tonight is by faith we walk and we live and we breathe. And I hope what you receive tonight is no matter where your boundaries are for obedience, they're too small today. And tomorrow, they will be larger. And Tuesday, they will be larger than they were on Monday. Because the view that my God as of me and you is so much larger than the view we have of ourselves. Let me pray over you right now. Father, we thank you. We thank you in Jesus' name that you are a God that increases capacity, that you are a God that increases anointing, that you are a God that, it, that supernaturally deposits gifts into the hearts of men and women tonight. I thank you right now for spiritual gifts being deposited into your people that stretch capacity. That you are a God who makes what was old, new. Thank you for, for stretching the boundaries of our obedience tonight, God, in your name we pray, amen. Man, I hope that you guys are fired up. I am so fired up after that worship experience. Man, so encouraging. Thank you, Pastor Mac, for that perfect word. It was perfect for right here, right now in this season. Man, there's so much that's going on here at Authentic. One of the really big things that's been going on is Authentic Youth. Hey, if you're a youth or you know a youth, you gotta get them here. There are some powerful things happening in the youth of Arlington. And so make sure to get them here on Tuesdays at 7 15. For all of you guys who have been giving 
Thank you so much. Continue to give. Continue to press in. Even in the midst of everything that might be going on in your life, it is so important. For me and my wife, we make sure that it's such a priority for us to make sure that we're giving because we know that we're impacting the kingdom through our finances. And there's a couple of ways you can do that. You can do that on Venmo or Authentic.Church under the Give tab. Hey, I can't wait to see you guys right here at 5 p.m. tonight. Bring your family, bring your friends, and I'll see you soon.